Hi, my name is Dr. Saab. Thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. And I'm sure that you are very interested in mechanical ventilation and that is the reason you are watching this video. So in this video, we will talk about the basic functioning of mechanical ventilation and also various terminologies, various terms used in mechanical ventilation. We will also learn various parts of mechanical ventilation, components of mechanical ventilation. Okay, so it is going to be very interesting for all of you who are watching this video. So let's enjoy. Various parts of a ventilator and its connections are shown in this diagram. So there is a support arm, which is a metallic and flexible arm and it supports to hold the ventilator circuit and also protect it from kinking or damage. There is a monitor touch screen to display various controls and monitoring parameters. And from the ventilator, the gases come through the an inspiratory port and are driven back to the expiratory port and both ports have inspiratory and expiratory valves. The inspiratory limb is a part of breathing circuit that is connected to the humidifier where gases are heated and humidified before delivery to the patient. Okay, so this is the inspiratory limb and this is the humidifier and from the humidifier gases goes to the patient. Okay, and in the breathing circuit there are two traps which are called water traps which collect the condensate from the circuit and then the gases are delivered to the patient through a Y piece connector okay that is called y piece and then through an airway device the gases are delivered to the patient's lung when we want to check the ventilator functioning before connected to an actual patient we can connect it to the test lung so this is the test lung uh, from the patient the gases uh, goes from patient to ventilator through the expiratory limb and then through the expiratory port back to the ventilator so this is the whole thing and then every ventilator has a flow generator unit inside which generates the inspiratory flow. And this unit is driven by the electricity and also has a backup inbuilt battery. Okay. To prevent the cross contamination and also to conserve the heat and moisture of the patient's respiratory system, HME filters are connected to inspiratory and expiratory ports. Remember that the ventilator is a life support machine which assists in breathing. Because it is a machine which interacts with the patient, we must understand the locations and functions of various knobs and buttons properly. Everyone who is, is going to use the ventilator on a patient must go through a user manual which comes with the ventilator and manufacturer provides it. We should connect the circuit humidifier and check the machine on a test lung. This test is called pre-use check, which is designed to check the integrity of the ventilator circuit and test for the leak in the circuit and functioning of various components of ventilator as well as the humidifier system. The pre-check is usually done at a time of humidifier or circuit setup. In addition, any time the circuit is changed or modified, a pre-use check must be done. It is vital that the alarms be set appropriately, otherwise there is potential for significant morbidity and mortality. Two key points to know when setting the ventilator alarms are that these devices are both protective and informative. Setting limits on rate, pressure and volume is just as important as the ventilator settings. So you must set the ventilator alarms very carefully. There are three major goals of ventilatory management means while a patient is on mechanical ventilator we have to make sure that these goals are achieved the mechanical ventilation should be able to correct the gases in the blood case gas analysis a good pao2 and acceptable psu2 the target pao2 to prevent the detrimental effects of hypoxemia is just more than 55 millimeter of mercury excessive oxygen is not good hyperkalemia can lead to respiratory acidosis and this acidosis is balanced by retention of bicarbonate by renal tubules as a part of renal compensation. So always look at pH. Okay, if pH is normal, we do not bother much about PaCO2. However, if the pH is less than 7.2, uh, the PaCO2 may not be tolerated by the body and then we must change the ventilator settings to wash out the carbon dioxide. 
Second goal of mechanical ventilation is that both ventilator and patient should be interacting with each other in such a friendly way that there is the least chance of mismatch or asynchrony between patient and ventilator. The mode of mechanical ventilation, which we would like to keep on mechanical ventilator for the patient should be not working against the patient own breath, rather supporting it. Basically, we observe whether patient is comfortable on that particular mode or not. Are there asynchronous gasping type of breathing or not? Okay, so this is important. Now, the third goal is to prevent the complications due to inappropriate settings on mechanical ventilator. Hypotension, pneumothorax, barotrauma, etc. are potentially preventable complications of mechanical ventilator, which can occur due to bad settings and we should always be very careful. Okay. Let's be familiar with two terms. First, you need to set a mode. The mode is the way ventilator delivers a breath to the patient. It indicates the type of breath being delivered and how the breaths are triggered, controlled, and cycled. The mode may belong to one of the three categories of conventional or basic modes of mechanical ventilation, adaptive ventilatory modes, or biphasic ventilatory modes. Tidal volume is the volume which is delivered in each breath and it needs to be set on volume control ventilation. Excess tidal volume can lead to barotrauma and lung injury before. Uh, therefore, five to six ml per kg of predicted body weight is set in patients with hypoxemic respiratory failure. In other patients, we may set higher tidal volume up to eight to 10 ml per kg of predicted body weight as well, depending upon the lung compliance. It should not be injurious to lung. Now we will talk about the respiratory Flow. The flow rate or peak respiratory flow rate is the maximum flow at which a set tidal volume of breath is delivered by the ventilator. Most modern ventilator can deliver flow rates between 60 to 120 liter per minute. If the peak flow rate is too low for a patient, the patient will feel dyspneic and there will be increased work of breathing by the patient. If it's set too high, then that may increase the peak airway pressure. Remember that higher peak flow rates may be necessary in patients with obstructive lung disease to decrease the respiratory time, thereby increasing the expiratory time and reducing the risk of developing auto peak. Then we have to set the flow patterns on mechanical ventilator. So you should know that there are two common flow patterns described in the upper part of this diagram or this picture, you can see the decelerating type of flow pattern where the flow goes to the maximum value and slowly, linearly, it goes down. And that is called decelerating flow pattern. In the second picture here, you can see the constant flow pattern. Okay, the constant flow pattern is like this. So it will be square wave pattern where the flow will go to the maximum value and it will be in the constant uh, flow rate for some time and then it will start decreasing. Okay, so that is called constant flow. Uh, it is described that this rating type of flow pattern is better because it is, it is associated with the lower peak pressures. Now we will understand some pressure values like inspiratory pressure. The inspiratory pressure is the pressure which generates the flow in pressure controlled ventilation. Okay, so P inspiratory we set in always in the pressure control ventilator PCV. Higher the P inspiratory, higher will be the tidal volume and higher will be the inspiratory flow. To determine the required P inspiratory, you have to put the patient first on the volume control ventilation, note down the driving pressure, okay, and the desired tidal volume delivery for two breaths. Then how will you calculate driving pressure? It is calculated as a difference between the P plat minus P. How will you calculate P plat? So obviously you have to put the patient on inspiratory hold. And when you put the inspiratory hold button for a few seconds, it will give you the value of P plat. And then P plat minus P will be your driving pressure. Okay. Then you change the setting from volume control ventilation to pressure control ventilation. And you set the inspiratory pressure as the driving pressure calculated. Okay and look at the tidal volume. If your tidal volume is good, I mean, is a desired one, then uh, you can keep that pressure. Otherwise you can a little bit increase also. So there may be plus two, minus two centimeter of water of driving pressure, which will be your inspiratory pressure, okay? The pressure support is 
uh, an augmentation to spontaneous breath in two types of modes, spontaneous mode and SIMB plus pressure support mode. Patient populations requiring long-term mechanical ventilation will benefit from pressure support mode. Okay, and this is the weeding mode. And this population may include a patient with small artificial airways, patient uh, with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and chronic muscle weakness. Typically, it is set between 10 to 20 centimeter of water. At the end of mechanical or spontaneous exhalation, PEEP helps to prevent collapse of aveli. And it's very important mode of therapy for improving oxygenation in ARDS and also in cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So you keep the PEEP little bit higher up to 10 to 12 centimeter of water in uh, pulmonary edema situations. Optimal level of PEEP is debatable. We set five centimeter of water. Now we will understand the trigger. The trigger refers to the signal that causes the inspiration. When you set the patient on assist control mode or spontaneous mode, a trigger setting is required. Trigger, an optimal trigger is the one which reduces the patient ventilator dyssynchrony and reduces the patient discomfort of breathing. Triggers can be of two types, mainly flow and pressure trigger. Neural and shape signaling are the latest type of trigger mechanism. So ETS stands for expiratory trigger sensitivity. It is the proportion of expiratory flow, that is your maximum expiratory flow, at which the ventilator will start cycling. ETS in other brands of ventilation can be called as E-sense or end inspiration or flow cycle. It is set in the pressure support mode of mechanical ventilation. By default, ETS is set as 25% of peak respiratory flow. Higher will be the ETS, longer will be the expression. Now we will understand RAMP. RAMP is nothing but IRT, that is respiratory rise time, which is setting on the ventilator and is defined as the time during which the ventilator achieves a target pressure in the pressure control mode or pressure support mode or a target flow in the volume control mode. It is set in the percent of the breath cycle from 0 to 20 percent of breath cycle time or it is also set as second from 0 to 0.8 seconds. The default settings are usually set at 0.15 or 5 percent of breath cycle. Now we will understand how to set respiratory time. The time is very important part of ventilatory management. In some ventilator, you can set I ratio directly, but in other, you have to set TI separately and I will be automatically calculated by the ventilator and shown on the screen. The basic fundamental question is how to set these timings. So that definitely depends on the patient type, gas exchange, status on ABG and pH, etc. Normally, you set the I ratio of 1 is to 2, which means that expiratory time is double of inspiratory time. On few ventilators, you can adjust TI and RR. If you change the RR, TI needs to be changed to achieve the desired TI. Okay. So RR is usually set at 12 to 16 breaths per minute. Lower RR is set in the obstructive lung diseases or if the patient is undergoing cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR. In post-operative patients on ventilator also are fine with the uh, lower respiratory rate. When, when do you keep higher rates? So remember in ARDS where you keep the lower tidal volume and maintain the minute ventilation of 6 to 8 liters per minute, you have to keep higher RR, say in the range of 20 to 30 breaths per minute. Also in case of metabolic acidosis, you have to keep the RR higher. Otherwise, pH will not be maintained in normal range. So here is the screenshot of a mechanical ventilator, Puritan Banet 840. The screen just to show you various settings as well as monitoring variables. So if these are the uh, setting variables, then these are the monitoring variables in upper part of the screen and these are the graphs, okay. This is the screenshot of a, a MacWet ventilator and you can again see a few graphs and numbers. There are some monitoring variables shown over here like peak inspiratory pressure and plateau pressure, et cetera, in, uh, which, which we will discuss in the next module of uh, this basics of mechanical ventilator tutorial. Fundamentally, all ventilators do just one thing, pushing air into the patient's lung during inspiration. When the gas moves in through uh, the trachea to your lung, it is called inspiratory flow. Demand of which is quite high in critically ill patients, but you do not have enough capacity to generate that much flow. Therefore, you need a machine which can generate a flow for you, and that is the ventilator. Okay. There are three main methods of generating inspiratory flow, as I said. 
pneumatic piston and turbine so in pneumatic type of uh, gas uh, inflow generators gas cylinders are connected okay these are gas cylinder which are connected uh, to the uh, inspiratory circuit and then pay goes the flow goes to the patient once the inspiratory valves open so few portable ventilator use this uh, type of uh, technology the technical specification for these device usually quote a minimum supply gas flow rate of about 120 liter per minute or a minimum supply pressure of 200 kpa that's the main drawback of these kind of uh, ventilator if pressure drops the power of ventilator drops okay now this is the second type called piston type which was introduced to augment the pneumatic pressure so here we have connected a piston between the patient and the uh, pneumatic type of system okay so this is the piston type of ventilator now piston is a rigid chamber the volume of which is mechanically manipulated okay uh, to generate respiratory flow the major advantage of piston ventilator is its ability to deliver accurate tidal volume so this type of ventilator is basically used in the pediatric and neonate ventilator most of the anesthesia ventilator use this mechanism nowadays however if there is significant leak this ventilator will not be able to compensate for it and the delivered tidal volume will be significantly diminished so that is the main drawback and that is why anesthesia ventilator cannot be used in icu Uh, patients because usually icu patients are on ventilator for very very long time for say for months together and also uh, we need to have a you know leak compensation and in piston type the leak compensation is very poor that is why scientists came with the advanced solution and they added a turbine so this is the turbine to compensate for enormous amount of leaks turbine based ventilator generate very high flow rates enough for a non invasive ventilator ventilator they require low pressure source of oxygen okay that is the advantage turbine cuts down the cost and energy consumption they are very lightweight they can be easily handled quickly transferred so these are the various advantage so they are very sturdy they can be used in icu and they are very uh, you, you can say energy efficient but they are a little bit costly but they can be durable for long very long time very even minimal maintenance is required in such kind of ventilator the main limitation is that you need an external supply of electrical power always once the inspiratory flow is generated we need to control it right this is done with two types of valves inspiratory valves and expiratory valves during inspiration expiratory valve opens and flow is driven to the patient survey so inspiratory valve opens and flow is flow is delivered to the patient okay after flow reaches to the maximum value inspiratory valve closes so here inspiratory valve closes once uh, the uh, set limit is reached and then there is a situation called inspiratory pause where both valves are closed usually it is kept between 5 to 15% of total inspiratory time of the cycle after inspiratory pause is over expiratory valve will open following which the expiration starts and expiratory flow goes to the maximum value then it starts decreasing slowly over time till expiration ends thank you so much for your attention we will meet again in the second module of this tutorial which is the basics of mechanical ventilation thank you so much